हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सोटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी बट इट्स न्यू मंथ हियर अगस्त इज हियर वी आर डन विद द फर्स्ट सेवन मंथ्स ऑफ दिस ईयर एंड लेस देन हाफ इज रिमेनिंग कैन यू बिलीव इट इट वाज जस्ट 2021 दैट डे एंड मोर देन हाफ हैज पास्ड सो देयरफॉर वी शुड बी वेरी कॉन्शियस ऑफ टाइम एंड today is also friendship day so i would like to wish each and every one of you watching this video who have been supportive of my channel always and to all your family members and friends a very 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 happy friendship day now what's going on in the month of august well this is from drikpanchang.com if you see clearly we'll go to the degrees uh Let's start from the king of all planets the sun he is in the sun in the sign of cancer and he's there with mercury then mars venus is in leo rahu ketu is in taurus and scorpio respectively moon starts his journey from aries i hope he's in bharani nakshatra yeah yes he's in bharani yes and Jupiter is in Aquarius uh, and Saturn is in Capricorn both of them are a uh, retrograde okay all right so <coughs> now this month has a very unique energy of Leo and uh, Cancer why do i say this because uh, primarily uh, for the month most of the planets will be either in these two signs all right the slow moving planets and uh, most importantly if you see saturn he is also aspecting cancer and jupiter is also aspecting leo so the cancer leo axis is very predominant during this month uh, i mean cancer and leo both the signs so wherever cancer and leo is falling in your chart depending on your ascendant uh, these two houses shall be the most prominent house most prominent houses are depending on what your dashas are indicating so for example um if you are um aquarius rising for example so in your chart if you are aquarius lagna person and uh, you are running the uh, dasha of sun okay so sun is the um seventh lord okay So in your chart, and then these planets are transiting here. So, in case you are a Aquarius rising and uh, you are searching uh, somebody to get married, then this is a very good time to find somebody. And the same is with a Capricorn also. If you are um, Capricorn rising and uh, you are running the Dasha of Moon, which is your seventh lord, then also it's a very good time to find uh, somebody to uh, get married. Uh, but suppose you are a um, aquarius lagna person and you are running the dasha of jupiter okay so in case you are aquarius then jupiter is the second lord okay so but now because the transit of all planets is happening in the seventh house so if you are running the dasha of the second house now the second house and seventh house have uh, one common thing in between them which is both of them represents marriage okay so although your planets are not transiting in the second house but because they are transiting in the seventh house which has certain common elements with the second house so therefore you also could get married okay same is with the uh, capricorn ascendant for example if you are a capricorn lagna and you are running the dasha of saturn which is again your second lord and all these planets are transiting here in the your 7th house then also the marriage can happen okay and guess if you already married then it's a good time to focus on your married life give some attention to your spouse maybe he or she is in need of something okay now let's take another example suppose you are um, you are a scorpio lagna person okay scorpio lagna so if you are a scorpio lagna leo is your 10th house right then what happens is uh, most of your planets are entering your 9th house and your 10th house so this means that 
your focus should be on doing big things which will make a change in your life distinctly and also in the lives of others because ninth house shows uh, things that you want to do uh, at a large scale at a big scale um, and 10th house shows uh, those things which you actually do and you end up transforming the society okay so ninth house is like the will 10th house is like uh, the practical implementation of uh, your desires okay and that's where the sun reaches his peak so therefore it's very crucial that you do not ignore depending on your ascendant where is um cancer and leo falling okay because sun mercury mars venus and jupiter saturn all are uh affecting uh these two signs all right now of course the month starts with uh moon being in bharni nakshatra moon is in bharni nakshatra from yes quite some time yesterday <coughs> and uh, as bharni nakshatra shows traits uh, related to things which are very slow so you might have felt uh, that you are trying to do something from yesterday but it's not happening and there's delay this um, it's like uh, getting delayed unnecessarily or somebody is behaving very irresponsibly you tell somebody to do something and that and then that person ends up not doing it so therefore this is a trait of bharni nakshatra so the month starts with this uh trait of bharni which makes you feel as if oh why is it starting so bad or oh, why is it starting so slow but it won't be like this always <coughs> why do i say this now you may you may think oh but bharni always uh makes things slow but why am i feeling this so much or why am i emphasizing this so much because if you check here uh the planet mars which is the planet of aggression and impulsiveness is in the sign of leo so because of that what happens is you end up feeling that yes i should be in control of everything and when you do not get what you wanted you become very frustrated uh, you become super frustrated and then you end up uh spilling your anger onto your near and dear ones all right so please do not do that this is the starting of the month and you are likely to feel the pressure but uh, very soon <coughs> moon will be uh, going into uh, kritika nakshatra uh, <coughs> uh, then uh, you will feel the relief then uh, then you will feel hopefully by today evening uh, you will feel uh, from tomorrow morning at the least that yes now things are uh, setting ahead and i will be taking the steps that are necessary to make to make the things make things happen actually and then if you go uh, if you go more forward uh, i will try to change this to 7th 7th of august oops this is 7th august and we see sun and moon uh i i guess the new moon is on 8th okay yes so on uh 8th there is the there is the new moon where uh sun and moon will be uh together conjunct with mercury in the sign of cancer all right so there you go uh this is uh 5:49 pm german time and you see sun is in 22 degrees moon is in 23 degrees so moon will be just crossing the sun in the sign of cancer so new beginnings related to the sign of cancer will be happening so wherever cancer is please put your focus there okay and now very soon uh moon will also move into the sign of leo and there you will be finding uh, that venus will be in the last degrees of leo and he will be about to move to the sign of uh, debilitation which is virgo right now the thing is uh, when this new moon occurs you will feel uh, a bit of restriction and you will feel 
it's better to be realistic than to be uh, super optimistic and become pessimistic later on all right so bit of realism is good why do i say this because you see saturn is directly aspecting this conjunction with mercury so your thought process may become stagnant you may feel that yes i want to do something but i'm not clear regarding how should i do it there are there are different ways of doing one thing uh, but which one is good for me which one is the best which one should i offer which is good for me so that is something which you might uh, have a uh, struggle uh, deciding okay but the thing is uh, next day so on on 9th 10th uh, you will have uh, moon which will uh, move into the sign of leo so even if you cannot make a, st a strong decision on 8th or 7th when the new moon is occurring in cancer please wait for the next two days so in the next two days you should be likely to make a decision but even then your decision may be filled with a lot of emotions and uh, anger and rage and hatred sometimes why because moon will be conjunct venus which hyper inflates your emotions and your desire to feel everything and it will also be conjunct mars so you are most likely to make a decision out of your feelings okay because you uh, could not experience something the way you wanted maybe you got it but your experience was totally different compared to what you imagined so therefore on 8th and 9th uh, make sure you you make the right decisions but uh, don't do it hastily and don't do it uh, because you you could not enjoy okay because if you make those decisions then later on what happens is venus will be moving into virgo so that time you may get, you may feel that yes i should have not made that decision because <laughs> within 3 4 days uh, around uh, yeah 10th 11th venus will be moving into virgo okay so if you go to uh, 11th then 11th of august yeah so moon will be uh, venus has already entered virgo so so 11th um, 12th yeah 13th so these days moon and venus will be uh, conjunct uh, in the sign of virgo okay <coughs> so that is the time you might again lament oh my god what did i do why did i do this okay so be careful when you make some decisions uh, but the good thing is uh, during those two days uh, when moon and venus uh, were in uh, leo so jupiter was aspecting them okay so that time around uh, yeah this is around 10th i guess when i said mars will also be there and you are most likely to make a rash decision but it will be guided by jupiter so on 10th you might make some decision uh, on 9th or on 11th uh depending on what your dashas are indicating but see jupiter's aspect is there so uh, you need to understand that there can be uh, a good decision made by you uh, but it has to be backed with uh, proper understanding and proper vision so if you lack vision then do consult some guru guide senior counselor or coach okay that's what the aspect of jupiter does that is exactly what it does it gives you guidance from some external source and then of course sun saturn are in the opposition um, till 15th and as <coughs> mercury also moves into leo uh, on 10th as you are seeing here there are four planets in the sign of leo moon mercury venus mars and jupiter aspecting this all right <coughs> so therefore leo is going to be very prominent uh, during those days like 10th and 11th okay then if you go to 16th 16th of august <coughs> yeah so then here you will see that venus has moved into virgo and sun is in the last degree of cancer <coughs> 
so if you go to 18th august you will see yes sun has now entered his own sign leo and mercury is in leo with mars so now again the sign of leo becomes very crucial because now sun is entering so your physical focus your conception of being in this world is shifting to dominance power authority and all this okay <coughs> and uh, mars is still in leo he is going to uh, sun is going to uh, cross mars and mercury uh, and mars are almost conjunct on <coughs> 18th 18th 19th mars and mercury are conjunct okay <coughs> so when mars and mercury are conjunct uh, it is a very good time to implement something that you always wanted to do at the same time it's a very good time to uh, think unidirectionally put your focus in the right place because sometimes mercury can give you too many ideas but what is that one area that you need to focus depending on your chart and your dashas that is what this conjunction can tell you mm. then uh, if you see this uh, this conjunction mercury sun mars this will be in trines to rahu because Rahu is uh, <coughs> in the sign of Taurus and then uh, Leo is a trine to Taurus. Okay. Oh, sorry, not trine. I mean a Kendra. Sorry. So this will be uh, in a 1-4 uh, axis. Okay. So the fourth house from Taurus is Leo. So now what happens is when Rahu Ketu are in Kendra of prominent planets, then kendra represents uh, opposition okay opposition doesn't mean like obstruction always they they can also show they can tell you that you need to do certain things uh, regarding those planets if you uh, if you if you want to succeed so for example when when uh, sun mars and mercury are in uh, angles to rahu which is you know kendra so then you might experience that there are certain unusual things which you might have to do and this will be, uh, become even more uh, prevalent when this new moon uh, sorry the full moon occurs so so on 23rd if i go yeah so on 23rd you will see yes so 22nd 23rd you have the full moon all right jupiter moon is conjunct and this Purnima is there, 22nd, 23rd, okay, full moon, so Leo Aquarius axis, the full moon is there, and before that, it will, the moon will cross Saturn, so you'll feel a bit restricted before the full moon, but as the third week uh, is about to end, you will feel that, yes, now you are much clearer about what to do in life, and, uh, now regarding what regarding the houses which leo and cancer rules okay so therefore uh, very crucial that you are very well aware of these two houses for this month and then of course by uh, the end uh, if you go to 28th you will see that mercury and venus will join each other and on 20 uh, on on 30th moon and rahu will be together okay so moon and rahu will be together by the end of this month and uh, sun mars will be in leo and mercury venus will be in virgo so this is also very peculiar energy moon moon in the rahu ketu axis can make things appear more bloated than they are and sun mars can force you to impulsively decide something all right and exert too much control over things which you think should go your way and then mercury can be obsessed with details and venus uh, because it is in debility but it's getting a nietzsche bhanga the debility is getting mitigated by mercury and the good thing here is jupiter's sun are in mutual aspect so this can give you hope optimism positivity and ability to make the right choices regarding the houses where leo is and during the end towards the end as i said moon rahu conjunction is there so 
this can figure out in a way where you are there is some long cherished desire which you wanted to uh, experience and you experience it but you wanted to experience it more but you don't experience it to that extent and then you end up becoming frustrated okay so therefore understand that whenever moon rahu or moon ketu are coming together things appear way different than they are so do meditation and on 28 29 30 31st these four five days do meditation and understand that everything need not be under your control even if you want it will not be okay so try to let go and try to understand that this leo energy is very strong and you may want everybody to listen to you but then everybody is having this energy so everybody will want everybody else to listen to them but that's contradictory right so the best uh thing to do uh in the end of this month is the, or rather the last week is to do your best and leave the rest to god okay so that will be all from my side so this month is a very uh, strong month with the new moon and the purnimas uh, full moons with you know jupiter saturn linked and therefore uh you will get a feeling that you need to really think big when jupiter saturn are involved in the new moon or in the full moon then you really need to think big to go to the next level all right so therefore utilize this month properly it's a very power packed month uh, just make sure that you do not make uh, you do not take a decision uh, you do not make it very hastily all right so think deliberate take advice from your guide your guru your counselor or your mentor or your coach or even your astrologer and then make the right decision if you are not confident all right that will be all from my side ladies and gentlemen um, once again wish you a very happy friendship day today and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me my website is down in the description section all right thank you very much